Michael McEvitt has been found guilty by the Special Criminal Court of directing the activities of an illegal organization. McEvitt, who's 53 and from Blackrock, Dundalk in County Louth, was also found guilty of membership of the real IRA. He's to be sentenced tomorrow. Once again, Michael McEvitt was brought from Portlaoise Prison under armed escort, and once again he refused to leave his basement holding cell at the Special Criminal Court today. Even to hear the three judges find him guilty of being a member of an illegal organization and directing the activities of that organization, the real IRA. In its 44-page judgment, the court gave its reasons for convicting him, outlining the incriminating evidence against him and explaining why the testimony of Garthi, other witnesses, and the main prosecution witness, David Rupert, along with a computer, a guidebook to Yugoslavia, and photographs found at McEvitt's home, proved the case against him beyond reasonable doubt. The court found that David Rupert was a paid agent of the FBI, not an informer or supergrass, had considerable knowledge of the Republican family, spoke with authority and an ability to recall, and was a truthful witness whose credibility had in no way been impugned. The officer who led the investigation said afterwards the Gardaí welcomed the verdict, but that the fight against subversive crime would continue. These are individuals and groupings who are oath-bound to take a, a sworn oath of allegiance to promote the activities of these illegal organizations. And uh, they're very, very jealously guarded in terms of the security arrangements that they have. And uh, they have a proven capacity in the past, as we all know, to uh, deal with informers. And that's why we're very, very grateful to Mr. Rupert uh, and the other sister agencies that worked with us on this case. The judgment also found that David Rupert's evidence was corroborated by Garda surveillance detectives who saw him go to meetings with McEvitt. A guidebook to Yugoslavia and a computer which Rupert gave to McEvitt which was found in his home when the Garda searched it and arrested him. On the charge of membership, the court accepted the evidence of Chief Superintendent Michael Finnegan, which although corroborated, was still enough in itself to convict him. Michael McEvitt is the first person to be convicted of the offence of directing the activities of an illegal organisation and only the second person after his number two, Liam Campbell, to be convicted of membership of an illegal organization on the evidence of a chief superintendent. He was found guilty of the offenses under legislation brought in after the OMA bombing, but the judgment stresses that OMA was not within the time period of either charge. He'll be sentenced at two o'clock tomorrow. Paul Reynolds, RTE News, the Special Criminal Court. Lawrence Rush lost his wife Libby at OMA five years ago this month. He attended this trial every day for the past seven weeks. He said he was delighted with the verdict. I'm sure that he will now feel what we felt and his family feel what we feel they'll have lost. And particularly his children have lost a father, you know. But nevertheless, you make your bed, you lie in it. Despite today's verdict, relatives are still very angry that no one has been prosecuted for OMA. When they read out Michael McKevitt's family, he had three children and two other sons by another marriage, I felt like saying in court, you've got your son, I haven't got mine. And uh, I would say to anybody that's involved in terrorism, the, sh the sheer human misery that they cause by doing what they do should make them sit up and think about what they do and decide the right way forward, and that's the right a way through discussion, through compromise, and through democratic choice. This evening outside Portlaoise Jail, Bernadette Sands McEvitt read a lengthy statement on behalf of her husband. Since its inception, the Special Criminal Court has shown itself to be a discredited house of love and devoid of justice. In this regard, my expectations were confirmed, as I was systematically denied a fair trial throughout the past six weeks. However, I am determined to take my case before another court in an attempt to overturn this flawed judgment and to attain justice. Shortly afterwards, Michael McEvitt returned to Port Leach Prison under heavy security. Annette O'Donnell, RT News. As you heard, Michael McEvitt has become the first person to be convicted on a charge of directing terrorism, an offence brought into statute after the OMA bombing. John Kilrain now looks at the background of the man Gore Thise has been involved in paramilitary activity for nearly 30 years. 
Michael McCavitt had been quartermaster of the provisional IRA and the court heard was responsible for bringing in arms shipments from Libya like the Exunt intercepted in 1987 with 150 tons of weapons aboard. FBI agent David Rupert testified how McCavitt had described the planning of the Warren Point bombing in 1979 which killed 19 British paratroopers. But McEvitt split from the IRA over their commitment to the peace process and he founded the real IRA with Liam Campbell, who's now in jail for membership, who became his second in command. His wife Bernadette Sands McEvitt was his number three. There's Rupert said McEvitt admitted his organisation built the Oma bomb, but said the continuity IRA botched the planting of it, killing 29 people. The McEvitts had to flee their home in the aftermath, but a real IRA ceasefire was tactical, according to Rupert. He said McEvitt wanted some spectacular operation like the bombing of the Canary Wharf Financial Services Centre in 1996 to overshadow Omer and restart the campaign. He hoped to get backing from Iraq. He talked of having British Prime Minister Tony Blair assassinated by a sleeper agent from the US who was a former French foreign legionnaire. And he talked about the possibility of a feud with the provisional IRA over weapons. He said one of his members had gathered information on Jerry Adams. Unknown to McEvitt, he was relaying all this information to an FBI agent. It would eventually be used to convict him in court and leave him facing a possible life sentence. John Kilrain, RT News.